Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to talk about the myth of invulnerability that surrounds the Iowa-class battleships. So, I'm a huge fan of the Iowas, but over their lifetime, uh, th this idea of them being invincible springs up out of nowhere. I want to talk a little bit about that and where it could have come from. So, uh, the most important thing to talk about is during World War II, when these ships entered service, there, there wasn't any myth of invulnerability surrounding them. And uh, maybe that has to do with everybody else having battleships too. And the Iowas do a lot of things great, but they aren't all that special. They can do 33 knots, but there are other battleships that can do more than 30 knots. They, they've got a, an interesting layered armor defense, but it's not the most effective armor defense ever designed. Uh, and the Navy wasn't very happy with it. They planned on doing a completely different armor scheme for succeeding classes of battleships. Uh, they, they could take some torpedoes, but the Navy was unhappy with their torpedo defense because of uh, fitting through the Panama Canal. Uh, the 16-inch 50 was a great gun, but it wasn't tremendously greater than anything else. And there were other guns that had greater range than it the Italian 15-inch gun, for example, and other guns that fired much larger shells, like the Japanese 18.1-inch gun. So th these ships were not universally acknowledged as the best in the world. Uh, even in the United States, they, they weren't acknowledged as the best in the world. Admiral Willis Lee was on board New Jersey for about two weeks, and then as soon as Washington came back from a yard period, he transfers his flag over to her a significantly older and, in theory, less capable ship. Uh, and Lee was the battleship expert in the U.S. Navy during World War II. So the concept of the Iowa class being special and indestructible did not exist during World War II. Uh, and their crew members feel relatively safe. Battleship crew members generally do, but they didn't feel like uh, nobody could touch them. As we get further and further from World War II and further and further from the age of battleships, uh, this idea of them being special simply because they're the last ones around seems to enter the public consciousness that this myth begins to form uh, when we sink all of the Axis battleships except Nagato and then nuke her to death. Um, that might have something to do with it. As other countries are decommissioning their battleships and only the Iowa class remains, well, now they're special. Um, and they certainly have more armor plate than any of the aircraft carriers or cruisers making up the fleet throughout the 50s, 60s, and especially by the 80s. Um, but what I really think is happening here is in the 1980s, I believe there is some deliberate propaganda on behalf of the United States to talk about how invincible these ships are. The Soviet Union has just built a class of modern battle cruisers that are excellent surface warfare ships. Uh, and the U.S. Navy doesn't have anything to compete with that. Uh, and they reactivate the Iowa class. But if you check out our video comparing the Kirov class battle cruisers to the Iowa class battleships, uh, you'll see it's not entirely a favorable matchup. However, uh, the U.S. spreads all this information about these ships being indestructible. And uh, quite frankly, it's not true. There, there are a number of ways to destroy an Iowa class battleship. Uh, any sort of modern underwater explosion is, is going to do a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, they, they just don't have, their, their below water protection was okay during World War II, uh, but it wasn't the best in the world, and it wasn't as good as the U.S. Navy wanted. And as weapons get better and better, such as submarine torpedoes that can explode underneath of a ship and break its back, well, an Iowa is just as susceptible to that as a guided missile frigate. Mines striking the ship underwater are cheap. You can throw a hundred of them out there, and if an Iowa hits one, it might not sink her, but she's mission killed. She has to be towed back to the U.S. for repairs. Uh, 
cruise missiles might not be able to defeat the ship's armor, but they can knock the ship out. There are a lot of sophisticated electronics in the superstructure that are not armored that get damaged from shock effect from a, a modern supersonic missile hitting them. Uh, so there, there are plenty of ways, uh, plenty of ways in our enemy's arsenal to disable an Iowa-class battleship or render it useless. Uh, and yet, the U.S. Navy talks about how these ships are a match for the Kirovs and an overmatch even because they're unsinkable. Uh, and it seems like the Soviet Union bought that propaganda and legitimately thought that they didn't have an answer to these ships, uh, which is great. That's what battleships are for. They're power projection assets. In the 1980s, despite being the most heavily armored ship on the planet, uh, the Iowa's inherent defense systems were anemic. There is no protection against submarines, torpedoes, or mines. Uh, just no way to prevent an underwater hit. If uh, a submarine is stalking us, we've got no sonar on the ship, we've got no anti-submarine capacity, except maybe what our uh, helicopters could carry. We have to operate with other ships. Uh, likewise, if somebody shoots a bunch of cruise missiles at us, well, we've got some anti-air capacity with the phalanx, the chaff launchers, and the uh, Slick 32 ECM countermeasures. But uh, other ships have anti-air missiles that they would use, adding another tier of protection. And the battleships don't have that. So if somebody launched a lot of cruise missiles at a battleship, it's going to get through. And one won't sink us, two won't sink us. There's never been a test of what, say, an Exocet missile, standard Soviet anti-ship missiles could do against armor plate. They likely aren't punching through the 12-inch belt, but remember, we've got an internal belt, so it can still blow holes in the side of the ship, and the superstructure is significantly less armored. It can blow away all of our electronics and missiles and other things. Uh, the battleship could, in theory, still operate. If we can get within 20 miles of a target, our 16-inch turrets and rangefinders could work. But our 33-knot speed was special for a battleship in World War II, it's not special on a modern battlefield. Everybody can do that. Uh, so there, there's no way that we're getting within gunnery range of an enemy warship. I should clarify at this point, again, I love IO-class battleships. I think they were great, and it was a good investment to bring them back in the 80s. Uh, but I don't believe everything that was said about them and things that we still hold true today is in fact true that, that these ships are invulnerable, untouchable on a modern battlefield. That simply isn't the case. So this Iowa-class myth of invulnerability is uh, something I've been thinking about for a while. It might not necessarily be something you've ever considered before. What do you think about it? Do, do you think it's true that, that these ships really are reasonably invulnerable? Or uh, do you think it is just propaganda? Or do you think it's simply a facet of them being the last battleships left and you can only sink a battleship with another battleship? I would love to see uh, some comments down below on your thoughts of that. I, I would love to get a conversation going on this. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of uh, private businesses, and individuals like yourselves. So we really appreciate that support. It lets us do what we're doing. There's a link in the description if you'd like to continue supporting us. An active duty warship might be invincible, but a museum ship is not. Your support helps us last a little longer.